oh, look at that uniform shop girl. Like, she she got on her knees and in scene by pants. Like Hi, guys. Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> I know it's been a hot minute, but we are back better than ever. So in today's video, I'm going to do a quick, not even a quick, I'm going to do like a Q&A, like a get to know you because I feel like since like I'm revamping the channel, I should probably revamp or actually introduce myself because I feel like I never introduced myself. So we're going to do that today. Before we start, make sure you like, subscribe and share. And here we go. So first off, my name is Alina. It's spelled A-L-L-E-N-A. -L -L -E now you might think, oh, her name's Alan or Lena or Alana. It's not, it's Alina. Okay, and if you think, if you think in your mind that no, this is how it's supposed to be said, don't worry about it, I'm telling you. It's pronounced Alina, so just stick with that. Thank you. I am 26, sometimes mistaken for 18, 19, 22, Never 25, but I am originally from New Orleans, Louisiana, born and raised. I am a cancer, just like our queen, Ariana Grande, and I'm really bad at introducing myself. This is why I barely have any friends. Okay, so <laughs> let me think of some other things people might care about. Um, I'm the oldest. Um, I like Jello. Uh, yeah, this is miserable. Okay, I'm just going to fast forward to the actual questions because that's, that's, that's structured. First question is, oh no. What is the worst job you've ever had? <laughs> I've had a lot of jobs. Now, I feel like the word worse is like a terrible word to use because I feel like every job I've had has given me some type of value. I'm gonna use the word worse to be like the most embarrassing. There we go. The one that I just did not find any pleasure in doing. So at the age of 16, yes, 16, I worked at a uniform shop. I, it was a summer job. There were other kids my age there. And the, uni so let me do some backstory. I went to an all girls Catholic high school and and um, I had very little interaction with the male species. I did not speak to men. I did not see men. I did not deal with men. Girls were crazy about guys in high school. Me, 75% of the four years that I was in high school, I felt like I didn't even think of a male. The beginning of my freshman year, one broke my heart. And then I met, the next one I came in contact with and interacted with was um, on any type of like conversation basis was probably like September of senior year. So I worked at this uniform shop. And when I say it, it was like all the Catholic schools. So there were all girls schools, all boys schools. All the Catholic schools uniforms were here. This is was the place where most people came to get their uniforms. And so as a employee there. We helped the tailors get their measurements. And so a lot of people, their problem areas were their pants. Their pants were too long. So as a 16 year old girl, who sometimes, sometimes had a social life, sometimes, not always, very rarely had a social life, um, I would have to get on my knees and measure the inseam. You know, the inseam is the, the middle part inside of the leg. Measure the inseam of these young men's pants. They usually came with their mothers, which was fine. So obviously they didn't say anything inappropriate. You know, it was everything was cool. But the, when it became awkward is when I saw them in public. That's when it was awkward. When I would leave work, I would go to basketball games or go to football games or go just anywhere with like the, like where high school kids went and I would make eye contact with these people. That was probably 
the worst feeling ever. It was so embarrassing. It was like, oh, look at that uniform shop girl. Like she, she got on her knees and in seen by pants. Like it was just so, uh, it was bad. It was terrible. I just, <laughs> I never get this one time. I was at a basketball, no, I was at a baseball game. And I made eye contact with somebody's pants I am seamed and like I was just like I need to go home like I didn't even tell my friends like I, I don't I don't even think anybody knew I worked there but like it was just too much and the funny thing is it was always guys who came there it was never girls there was this one girl who went to high school with me who came into the uniform shop um if she was like gonna be a freshman and I think at the time I was gonna be like a junior or senior that is probably the only person from my school I ever saw at this uniform shop. And her mom actually tipped me a hundred dollars that day for like helping them. And I saw her maybe a few times in the hallways. It, it was never in a negative exchange because all I had to do was measure her waist. I didn't have to get on my knees. Girl, no, girl. It was, it was probably the worst job ever. It, the money was fine. The money, I got paid over minimum wage at the age of 16, which that's why I feel like America said the aftermath of it was the embarrassing portion for me was yes it was yeah embarrassing <laughs> next question what would your TED talk be on my TED talk I've been thinking about this for years my TED talk would be on why do you give a that's what it'd be on. I have too many people in my life that care so much about what other people think. And it, it's a difference between like ha like worrying about your reputation in a sense, like your, your mild reputation. But like when we get in depth about what does this person, like that stuff bothers me to death. Like that would be my TED talk. Like, why do you care? Like if they're not paying your bills or financially supporting you or are not your significant other, why? Like why? And the TED talk is actually already prepared. Um, it's ready to be executed because I've lived this. Like the life of like being, being someone who was invisible for a very long time to a lot of people and observing a lot of things. Like I became friends with a lot of unusual people. Like people like, you know how like you're in, you're in school and like there's like the popular girl and there's like the person who's like not popular at all and like nobody knows them. Like I was the person that like nobody knew in a sense and I had a lot of friends that I felt like personally were popular. And I learned so much from them, like so much about like self-confidence, so much about self-awareness, so much about what happens like behind the scenes of like being that person that's like most desirable. And these people were amazing people. Having to see like those people that you thought from the outside had it all together, but then when you really got to know them on the inside, they were probably like the most like sweetest and like sensitive people that you could possibly meet. It, it drove me insane because I just felt like you have so much power, like you have so much potential, you have, you have it. And you're just like, but you got this. Like, you ain't got to worry about them. Like, they ain't nobody. Like, that would be my TED Talk. But I won't give it out for free because I can't afford to do that today. Next question. So last question because I am hungry. All right. So what pushes you to continue every day? So I think what pushes me to continue every day is the idea of being able to just help people. Um, I help people at my job doing social media and marketing. I help people by creating these videos and talking to people. I help people when they call me and ask me to do things for them. Like I love helping people. I love helping people problem solve and figure out things and talk through things. Like I, yeah, I definitely have a very strong opinion. But at the same time, like I love giving people ideas on how to fix whatever they're going through. I think that's what helps me get up every morning is to know that every day I will be helping someone and helping someone figure out whatever, whatever they need. And I know there's so many different avenues 
that I'm doing it in that I will reach someone that day. And yeah. All right. So make sure you guys like, subscribe, and share, and comment at the bottom. So until next time, guys. Bye.